I trained marine mammals for 10 years. So I, it was killer whales, dolphins, sea lions, walruses, otters, beluga whales. It, it was a, a pretty extensive career working with marine mammals. And what that entailed is all positive reinforcement, all of it. You, yes. you use no pressure release anywhere in this quadrant at all. And so that's how I learned to train animals. And then I went and saw Elizabeth Bush Burke of Anheuser-Busch owned SeaWorld at the time. So she gave some of us trainers tickets to see a show jumping Grand Prix. So we go see it and I am like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like the 12 year old kid. And I'm like, I wanna do this. And, and you know, everybody else like, whatever, see you tomorrow. You know, cause there were our trainers there and they just weren't as taken. Now I'm gonna admit, most of those horses look stressed. But you saw, Tension, stress, not joy. And and then there's two horse and rider combinations. It looked like a walk in the park. And it looked easy and it looked fun. I thought that's what I want to do. And I know with the positive reinforcement, we can create high criteria, teach them to do it. I'll just hang on and it'll be how it goes. And, and even I was so taken, I went and, 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 I, and so then I talked to Grand Prix show jumpers because I had access to them. So I was saying, you know, do you do positive reinforcement? How do you, you know, positive reinforcement? Positive? And everyone's like, no, 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 it's not how it's done. Horses aren't smart enough to learn this way, blah, blah, blah. And so I was thinking, <laughs> and you're jumping five and a half yeah. foot fences, yeah. long, but whatever. Yeah. And so I just kept hearing no, and I thought, oh, this is so frustrating. But so I never really took a dive into it, but I just kept, it kept working. And then I read this People Magazine article uh, yeah, that's an ambition right there. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I read the article, and it is by a man named about a man named Tom Dorrance. And so I thought this guy sounds different. Now, I didn't know who he was. I I had no clue about any of that. So she I knew about sea creatures, folks. Yes, I did. <laughs> and and so I called him on the phone because this was not internet days. You know, we're talking thirty years ago. And so I called him on the phone, and he was very nice, and he said, yes, yes. I said, I'm a marine mammal trainer, and we use food for training, <laughs> and what do you think? And he said, definitely, you should do this. It's, it's, you should do this. And he invited me to come to his farm, to, to his ranch, and work with him. And I was like, I have to work. Who is this guy? Because <laughs> I didn't really know who he was. But That's but, funny. I love that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she has a job that most people want, <laughs> and she gets on the phone with most people that – in the industry, we go, you had the chance to go work with Tom Dorrance, and you didn't? No. Yeah. 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 You called him? Yeah, uh, and yeah so, you called him. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And he was. And he answered. Yeah. And was, he was an assistant answered first, and then oh, she put okay. it to, on. And he was, what I got out of that, one, he was really kind, and he was older now, but he still wanted to learn. And that, to me, was really powerful. The thing, we never should stop learning. No, that's Just keep opening up and learning things. And then, and then during that call, I thought, well, then I'm going to go take jumping lessons. So he was really sweet, and he sent me a signed book, and I will never oh. forget it. It turns out he had used food and training, but he didn't know how to fade the food. So he thought, it's powerful. It gets stuff done, but I don't know how to get past it, you know? Right. And that's what with the marine mammals, what we did is we used a systematic approach utilizing positive reinforcement, then building up duration and behavior chains where you start to fade the food from particular behaviors. So yes. I still use it, I still have it and Wait, use can it. Can you say that again for all the people that do use yes. food? Yes. Yeah, that's what I, I see. Yeah. Well, you gotta pay them every time. And you, yeah, you really. The fade is important. Yeah. It is yeah. important because that, like, think about it. You teach a horse through even positive reinforcement, whatever. You teach them to put on halter. We teach little horses dip their nose in. We put it over the ears. We do the steps. We build a good, strong mm -hmm. positive reinforcement history. Pretty yes. soon they're like, it's classically they, conditioned. Exactly. They're like, I just love right. putting my halter on. That You, yes. you don't own just me. Just like the mare that I went to, that Peruvian paso that had never been touched and she was pregnant. So I started by getting the halter on her, using her food yes. to do that. But once she trusted me, we didn't need we the didn't food We didn't need anymore. to do it. No, yes. we never used the food to put the halter on. It was just that yes. first few times while we were building the relationship and the trust, because her trust was not in me. It was in the food at the time. Yes. So then it reverted to being me, and then we were good, but the food is what started it. So yes. the important thing that people don't realize is you might one day be in a predicament, very likely with a horse, where you don't have that with you and you need to do something. So you don't want to be reliant on it, but if you use it to help build that trust in the beginning and then you condition the horse to where it's not reliant yes. on it all the time, and then you don't necessarily have to take it away altogether forever. You can always reinforce again, 
but you don't want to be like reliant on it because if exactly. you are exactly you got a problem i tell people if it feels like it's all about the food mm -hmm. you're doing something wrong right because it shouldn't be yeah the marine mammals people don't really think about this they got all their food each and every day regardless of what they did or didn't do they got all their social interactions each and every day regardless of what they did or didn't do yet we got very very high criteria some behaviors will take a year to train so what are they doing it for? It's not the food. They can just get the food. They'll get it all throughout the day. So what it was is we made sure it became a game that they enjoyed. Do you know they've done a study where they gave animals free food and then they taught them to hit a lever for food. What do you think they did? They tend to ignore the free food and go to the lever for food. And, and they did it with different animals and they kind of realized that there's something in us that actually would rather work for the food. And I think about it like with crossword puzzles. I love doing crossword puzzles. Nobody pays me for that, but I love that challenge. But here's the, here's the catch. So I tell people when they're starting, I say, you need to be raising the criteria all the time, but not so much that they quit. It needs to be easy enough that they can get it or clear enough that they get it. And there's not frustration. And then pretty soon they're like, I'm a good problem solver. And then, you, that, you know, they get a little better and you start saying, well, now we're going to work on collection. Can you do this and this? And they're like, there's an answer in here somewhere. So they don't go to the frustrated place. But we've faded the food from the pieces. And I may still go back and reinforce it, right. you yeah. know, but you yeah. move on from there. Right. And if you stay in that place, you make it all about the food. And you get this sense of entitlement. You've taken the joy out of it. If somebody brought me a crossword puzzle every day, and it was easy crossword puzzle, they say, we'll pay $10 to do it. I'd be like... At first, I'd be like, ooh, okay, crossword puzzle. I end up getting paid. This is great. And then pretty soon, they bring it to me, and it was the same puzzle. I'd be like, Bleh. You know, right. there'd be no yeah. joy in it anymore. So I think it's important that we get yes. them playing the game and feeling like they're good problem solvers. So yeah. so that is that. where we got started. And then, so then I was, I had a, a boyfriend at the time who was a Grand Prix show jumper. He had, he. That's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> He had quit, though. He came to SeaWorld to get a job training marine mammals. He rode with George Morris for five years, which is a big name in there. He had ridden with Ann Krasinski mm -hmm. and, and John and Beezy Madden. So John Madden comes into, I'm, I was in San Diego, comes into town to design a course. And so we go out to dinner. He says, Shauna, tell John about the training you did with the marine mammals. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> that, you know, and so I said, this is what we did. This is how it goes. And, you know. And he got more and more and more intrigued. And he's he's a really, really smart man and an excellent horseman. And basically, as he at the end of the night, we went home. We didn't really use clickers with the marine mammals. We didn't call it clicker training. But I had some clickers from a particular uh, something or other that we had done. So I, we went home, and I sent him home with a clicker. And he went home that first day, and Beezy had a horse who was terrified of the riding stick. They came to them that way. So you couldn't have it on the ground, under saddle. Your neighbor couldn't have it. And he said that first day, he got that horse not only touch that riding stick, he said, I can't get him to stop. He said, if I turn that big of a no into that big of a yes this quickly, there's a place for this in Grand Prix show jumping. Please come here. We'll start a business. Let's do this. So, and as I, then with John and Beezy Madden, that's where uh, John went home and said, let's do this. Let's work this out. And so we went to John and Beezy's for the first week. And all we did, this is concepts you might not know if you're not familiar with positive reinforcement, but spent three five-minute sessions a day conditioning the clicker because we were going to use a clicker even though we didn't with the marine mammals. And then three five-minute sessions a day teaching the target. So we saw, I saw the horses for a total of 15 minutes a day. Had nothing to do with the riding. It was only I caught them when they were in their stalls. They did their normal things. Yet Beezy, who's really kind of a quiet person, doesn't just say extra things. At the end of the week, she said, Every single one of those horses you're working is remarkably better in the arena. And yet the training hasn't overlapped. So this became the beginning of starting to realize this is the training we know. It's like an iceberg. And all under here is a huge amount that I was yet to discover. So Very cool. That's where we started. And we started introducing it to the horse world, doing expos and demos. And, and that was 29 years ago. 